Hi guys and welcome to TechBased. In this video, we're going to talk about the latest Windows 11 Insider preview build for the dev channel, which is the build 26200.5518. Microsoft released a build for both the dev and the beta channels and the builds are pretty much the same. But what I can tell you is that this is one of the biggest builds that we've had in a while because this build has a lot of new interesting features that we're going to talk about in this video. So if you enjoy videos like these, please don't forget to leave a like below and also subscribe to the TechBased channel with the notification bell activated so that you won't miss any future uploads like this one. This video is sponsored by Private Internet Access. A virtual private network or VPN for shorts hides your IP address and safeguards your internet connection through an encrypted tunnel. Streaming services such as Netflix have different library options based on where you are located. Using Private Internet Access, you will be able to watch those shows or movies that are not available in your current location. Make sure to check out Private Internet Access in the links from the description below for a great deal. 83% discount in 4 months free. First of all, starting with one of the highlights from this build, in my opinion, a hidden feature, a feature that is being tested by Microsoft behind the scenes that was discovered by Phantom of Earth on Twitter or X.com is a new start menu layout. So I'm going to open the start menu. This is the new start menu layout. So what has changed? Basically, the start menu has two different sections combined, the pinned, recommended, and also the all app sections combined. Up top, we have the pinned section. In the middle, we would have the recommended section which can be turned on or off and we have the all app section with the different views that we can select the name list which is a alphabetical list the name grid which also shows the bigger icons and labels and also the category view which we talked about in a few builds ago also of course if you right click and go to start settings we're going to notice that certain things are now changed and for example if i'm going to enable show recommended files and start recent files and explorer and items and jump lists we're going to notice that whenever i'm opening certain files or using certain files the recommended section will also appear here. If you want to disable the recommended section in the file explorer altogether, just make sure you disable show recently added files, show recommended files and start, and also show most used apps. And this is basically how you can disable the recommended section in the new start menu. I'm really curious about what's your opinion on this new start menu layout. In my opinion, it's a pretty nice layout and it's good that of course you can change the view even on the all app section, even though one downside to this I would say is that the start menu is larger now and also the pinned app section is now limited to only two rows as you can see only two rows are shown here but you can click on show all to show all the rows inside the pinned app section or you can go to start settings and select show all pins by default and this will basically show all the pinned apps by default whenever you're opening up the start menu overall i kind of like this new layout it basically includes everything that you would need the search box the pinned app section the recommended section if some people want it, of course, and also the all app section, which as you can tell, I think my favorite view of it is the category view, which looks the best. And of course, we have the rounded corners, nice animations, the mica effect. Overall, I think this start menu could be better than the previous layout. So that's why I'm also waiting for your opinion in the comments below to see what you think about this new start menu layout. Of course, I'm going to make a video maybe tomorrow, which I'll show you how to enable this because of course it requires a few IDs because this is a feature that is being tested by Microsoft behind the scenes. So we can and manually enable it if we want. Now, another big feature in this build, and I think another highlight of this build, is the ability to use small icons or small buttons in the taskbar. So this feature can be accessed if you right click on the taskbar, go to taskbar settings, and here, if you scroll down to taskbar behaviors and expand it, you'll notice this new section shows smaller taskbar buttons. You can select when taskbar is full or always. And if you select always, you're gonna notice that we have these new smaller taskbar buttons. And I'm gonna open here a few different apps so that you can can see how it looks. Overall, I think this is good for people that use a lot of apps, have a lot of apps pinned to the taskbar. But of course, hopefully Microsoft will go the extra mile and also let us enable the small taskbar because I think it's not a long way to work on that. We already have the small icons. I think the small taskbar should be quite simple to implement. So hopefully Microsoft will listen to its users and let us enable that as well. Of course, this is again a feature that is slowly being rolled out to people. So when you install this build, you may not see it right away but of course i'm gonna make an updated video which i'll show you how to enable this if you want to enable it on your dev or better channel builds another big feature is the new drag tray feature so if you have a file on your desktop or in the file explorer or in another location if you drag it this new section will appear up top drag here to share if you hover over it we're gonna have the options to quickly share it to your phone snipping tool paint outlook the feedback hub where if you go and leave your mouse on more it will automatically open up the share window where we're gonna have 
have multiple options to share it with different apps, nearby sharing, and so on. I think this is a nice new feature that Microsoft is also rolling out slowly with this new drag tray feature that matches the Windows 11 design principles. Maybe I would like it to have the mica effect, but I'm not really sure about that. I think it will look cooler than this opaque design, but I think overall this is a pretty nice new addition and feature that is being added. We also have some new additions in the settings app. So first of all, if we go to accessibility and then mouse pointer and touch, you're going to notice that we are getting the new mouse options here in Windows 11 on the dev and the beta channels. Basically the new ability to customize the mouse pointer image by manually selecting your mouse pointer. Of course, you can click on browse, you can change it and then you can reset it if you don't like it. You also have the new mouse indicator option that you can enable whenever you are clicking the control key. You can also enable the mouse pointer trails, the mouse pointer shadow and in additional or related mouse options, you have the enhanced pointer precision option and more options. Basically, Microsoft is starting to move a lot more settings from the old control panel to the new settings app. So I think this is great news. Also in Bluetooth and devices, pen and Windows Inc, Microsoft is updating this page alongside with the touch page in order to have options if you want to press and hold for pen or touch to perform a right click action. So I think that is also a pretty nice addition. Also the improved battery icons in Windows 11 may disappear for Windows and Saturdays in the current flights. Microsoft will begin to reroll this change out to Windows and Saturdays in a future build. There are also some new improvements for Recall and also Click to Do for Copilot Plus PCs. For Recall, Microsoft is trying out a basic search history feature and also Click to Do is adding a new Ask Copilot option or action that can be used. For people that have PCs which support Studio Effects, if you have not used Studio Effects before, Microsoft is automatically enabling the automatic framing filter and a notification toast will pop up letting you know about this when you first use the video camera. You can easily turn it off via Studio Effects in Quick Settings or Windows Plus A on your taskbar. Now let's talk about a few fixes in this build. First of all, we have a fix related to graphics. Microsoft fixed an issue where external graphics cards connected over Thunderbolt were unexpectedly not discoverable in some cases. And related to Hyper-V, Microsoft fixed an issue where Hyper-V Manager may report 0% CPU usage for VMs in some scenarios. Related to known issues, we have a few new known issues in this build. Quick Assist will not work for non-administrator users. And also Windows Sandbox will not work in this build or is available to be installed. This is fixed in the next flight. So this is basically everything that is new inside this build for the dev channel and also for the beta channel. Basically, the builds are pretty much the same. The only difference is that on the beta channel, Microsoft is announcing some improvements related to quick machine recovery. For more information, of course, you can check out the article below in the video's description, the official Microsoft blog post, or Phantom of Earth on x.com or Twitter for more information about hidden features inside Windows Insider builds. If you enjoyed this video, please don't forget to leave a like below and also subscribe to the TechBase channel with the notification bell activated so that you won't miss any future uploads like this one. I was Emmanuel from TechBase. Until next time, have a nice day.